like to say praise Lord and good morning everyone we're going to begin our morning worship service when I ask that everyone saying at this time we're going to go, go before the Lord in prayer thanking him for all he's done and all he's doing we realize that he's doing great things in our lives and we praise him for this resurrection uh, morning or almost afternoon but this resurrection day that he allowed us to walk into so we thank him for what he's going to do in our life on today looking for him to do great things for us on today I don't know about you but I'm so glad and I'm here today to be able to celebrate I said able to celebrate hallelujah able to make some noise in here because he lives I said because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives I said because he lives hallelujah hallelujah I just wish everybody knew that he lives today thank you Jesus hallelujah you know we we, we, we we want everybody to live but everybody can't do something for us if they did live but the one that can do something for us today lives today and he lives inside of us hallelujah 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 so we're going to ask that we will bow our heads in the word of prayer father god in the name of jesus god we thank you for this day hallelujah i said we thank you for this day hallelujah we thank you hallelujah we come today god thanking you you alone is worthy you alone is worthy today god in the name of jesus we celebrate you today god we glorify you on today god in the name of jesus hallelujah 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 today god hallelujah hallelujah today god hallelujah hallelujah today god hallelujah god we praise you today god in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we praise you today god Oh, we praise you today, God. We praise you today, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We praise you today, God. In the name of Jesus. We praise you today, God. In the name of Jesus. For you've done so much for us, Father. You've done so much for us, God. You've done so much. You've done so much. And we praise you, oh God. You woke us up this morning, God. You started us on our way, God. In the name of Jesus. You gave us, God, the activities of all our limbs, God. Oh God, we praise you today, God. We praise you today, God. In the name of Jesus, our loved ones, oh God, you move upon them, oh God, and you woke them up, you woke them up this morning, God, oh God, we didn't receive a phone call on last night, because you woke them up, yes, and we thank you. I said we thank you. Yes. God, I thank you. I thank you for moving, oh God. I thank you for moving, God. 
because if you hadn't moved God uh, I wouldn't be here on today God uh, in the name of Jesus uh, God I thank you for moving God uh, oh God I thank you for moving God oh God I thank you for moving God I thank you for moving God For you're God that moved God You know how to move God In spite of all that we go through God You keep on moving Yes you do Hallelujah, God. In, in spite of even our ways, God, you keep on moving. Yes. You keep on making ways for us, God. We thank you on today, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Jesus, oh, so God, we owe you on today. But we can't pay you, God. But we owe you. And what I like about you, God, that even though we can't pay it, Father, you still let us, oh God, come to thee. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, you still, God, allow us, oh God, to call your name, Father. You still allow us, oh God, to assemble ourselves, Father, in the name of Jesus, in spite of us, Father. You do it. You show forth your love. And you allow us, Father, to share it. Mm. Oh God, you allow us to share your love, Father. Oh God, mm. in the name of Jesus, oh God. So God, we thank you on today, Father, for what you're going to do in our midst on today. And we come, Father, oh God, to give you, give your name glory, give your name praise, and give your name honor, because it all belongs to thee, Father, for what you're going to do in our life. And so, God, we ask, so, God, that you continue to look upon even those that are afflicted among us and those that are going through, Father. Meet the need on today, Father. Hallelujah. You, 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 you specialize in doing these things. So we ask, Father, that you would meet the need, Father, in the name of Jesus. And so, God, we ask that you continue to look upon even those that are homeless on today. Father, they need you. Those that are incarcerated on today, they need you, Father. Those, oh God, that are in the homes, Father, they need you today, Father. And most of all, Father, those that don't even know you as their Savior, they need you on today, Father. In the name of Jesus. Make a way out for them on today, Father. You are a way maker, Father. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we praise you on today. We praise you for your healing virtue on today. How you open doors, oh God, for those saints of God that, oh God, they're in the midst of us today, our mothers, Father. You gave them enough strength. You touch their hearts and you touch their minds and you gave them the ability to be here on today and we bless you for it, Father. Hallelujah! You didn't have to do it, Father, but, but you did it! You made a way, God! You made a way, God! You're a main way maker! Yes! You're a way maker. And we thank you, Father. So we praise you, Father, that you would continue, oh God, to move in our midst on today. That you would meet every need, Father. In the name of Jesus. Even those, Father, that are yet on their way, Father. We pray, Father, that you keep them covered under your precious blood. That you would suffer no hurt, 
harm nor danger, Father, to come towards them, O oh God. And even those that we haven't seen in a while, Father, we pray, Father, that you continue to strengthen them. Continue to have your way in their life. We even pray, Father, for our sister Penny, that you continue to move in her life, that you continue to strengthen her. Heal, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done on today, God. Let her feel, oh God, your resurrection power, oh God, even in the hospital, God. Even there, Father, let her be a witness for thee. Ha. Let her be a witness for thee, even in that situation, Father. You do it. You do it. In the name of Jesus. And so, God, as the as we go forth, oh God, in the songs of Zion, we're praying, Father, that your anointing, oh God, from on high, that will wrap around our praise lead, oh Father, and that you would use her for your glory, Father, in the name of Jesus, like never before, God. We want a never before thing going on today, God. Hallelujah, God. You are God, oh God, that is able to do exceedingly and, and abundantly and above all, God. That we would act so, oh God. Because you're that type of God. So we praise you, oh God. And those that are on in the streets on today, use them for your glory, Father. Oh God, let the anointing, Father, flow from the crown of their head, oh God, to the sole of their feet. And let it move, oh God, upon them, oh God. That, oh my God, that we will experience, oh God. That we will experience, God. A resurrection service on today. In the name of Jesus. And so, God, we praise you on today. We glorify thy name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Everyone say amen. Say amen again. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but this is a resurrection Sunday here. And a lot of times we don't we don't we, we, we don't put our all in it. But I'm here to tell you that a man that died, he still lives. And he's my savior. Let me make this personal because. When you make things personal, it, it feels better. When you make it, a, you know, for everybody, everybody can't feel it the way you feel it. But he died for me. Hallelujah. He did something that nobody else can do. He rose. Hallelujah. With all power. Not some power, but all power. Hallelujah. And not only that, he said, I can, I can experience that power. Hallelujah. See, you got people with power and they don't want to they don't want to share it. Huh? They don't want to share that power. But God told us to share it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm so glad that I'm a part of it. I got a family. I got a family you just can't you can't number. Hallelujah. If I wasn't here today, I could be at another family. Because my family is large. You hear me? I could go down the street and still find some of my family because they are sons of God. They, 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 see, y'all don't understand where y'all at. Y'all don't understand the family you in. You in the family. I said, you in the family. The family of God. Hallelujah. And I'm just so excited. Come on, sister. I'm just so excited what God is going to do for us on today. Mother Bash here. Yeah, I'm just so glad for you, Mother Bash. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Mother Bob, sister, Mother Bob, she got, she got here early. Early this morning. I was like, look at here. Look at here. Look at God. I said, hey, I said, hey, hey, hey some of us are a little uh, younger, and we just moseying on in. We, 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 uh, if I could just get there at the regular time, I'll be there. 
And they said, listen, I, I just like, I just like old mothers. I, I'm just, 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 just give me a minute. I just like them because they like, they know how to do things. They, they know how to get there early. And they know how to do things right. Hallelujah. I said they like to get there early and they like to do things right. Amen. Hallelujah. And they can tell you Ooh, something. Thank you. They can, they, can, they can give you their story of how they made it over. Hallelujah. And they'll tell you that it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Don't, don't, don't give me all the credit. It wasn't me. It was the God that I served. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. You. See, when they tell you about the God they serve, Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Something in, on the inside should just make you just bubble open. You'd be like, oh God, just tell me more. Just tell me more. Just tell me more about Amen. him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Come you. on, Jesus. Amen. We say praise the Lord and good morning and happy Resurrection Sunday to everyone. Hallelujah. He lives. He lives. Hallelujah. Our Savior lives. Christ Jesus lives today. I love that song. He lives. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. And he walks with me and he talks with me a long life now away he lives he lives salvation to improve you ask me how I know he lives he Praise God for that song. Saints, God lives. Christ Jesus lives. Hallelujah. He lives. He died. He was buried. He rose again. We don't serve a dead God. Certain, we serve a God that lives. And he is caring enough to see about your needs, saints. You just have to be crazy enough to tell him all about your trouble. Hallelujah. Because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can act so i think we thank god for seeing you again we thank god most of all for seeing our mother bash we just want to give god praise because we know that she was very ill and we see that god is a healer and we praise god for seeing her out on day sister barbara we thank god for seeing her we actually walked watched her walk today hallelujah she walked hallelujah and we praise god hallelujah God is good and he's worthy of every praise every hallelujah and every thank you Jesus he's worthy we're gonna go right into our, our worship service because he lives God sent his son they called him Jesus he came to save and to heal and forgive can't put your hands together. He bled and died. Oh yes, just to buy my part on. Oh yes, he did. And in me grave, his words he'll prove that my Savior lived. He told me this. He told me this. Oh yes, we can face our tomorrow. Oh yes, we can. We he lives, all of my fears, my fears are gone, oh yes they are, and because I know, oh, oh, my future, oh yes I do, and I think of the living just because he lives, because he lives, oh because he lives. Oh, yes, we can. Because he lives. All of my fears, my fears are 
Hallelujah. I don't care what happened, what people say. Our life is worth the living because he lives. Our Savior Jesus lives today. We praise God for that song. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. And they took the time to pray for me. And I'm so glad they prayed. Mother Batch was saying, I don't know who was praying, but I thank God for the prayers. Hallelujah. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. And God does hear and answer prayers. I'm so glad they prayed. Hallelujah. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I am. Somebody pray. Somebody pray for me. They had me on their mind. Took the time to pray for me. I said, and I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray for me. Somebody pray. Somebody pray for me. And they had me on their mind. For you hallelujah your pastor prayed for you i think about all the times i heard my mother pray hallelujah she's no longer here but her prayers 
went up. Hallelujah. Bless Greta. Hallelujah. Prayers don't expire, church. Hallelujah. My mother prayed for me. Hallelujah. Had me on her mind. She took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad she prayed. Hallelujah. And that's why it's important for us to pray for each other. Hallelujah. Pray in and out of season. Pray when there's no special reason. When things don't go right, just get on your knees and pray. Hallelujah. We praise God for that song. And that's why we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making. Lord, you made me whole. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for giving. Lord, you came to me. Thy great salvation. Hallelujah. So full. It's so full. It's so full and free. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for saving. Lord, you saved my soul. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving. Lord, you gave to me thy great salvation. So full, so full, so full and free. We thank you, Lord, for blessing of a past. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for making, Lord, you made me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation. It's so full, it's so full, hallelujah, it's so full and free, thank you Lord, at this time, we're going to have our mother back, because she has a praise ringing up in her soul, hallelujah, because she know what God has done for her, She's been through death door. Hallelujah. And can't nobody tell her testimony but Mother Bass. Thank I got short of breath and I couldn't hardly breathe. It was starting. It was starting then and I couldn't hardly breathe. And um, everything just went lower, lower. You know, God had a, uh, took me back over my life. And I had time to 
look, wonder, and thank God for where he brought me from. And I do think and I praise God for where he brought me from. He brought me from a mighty long ways. I'm not going to take up all the time, but I'm just going to tell you some of the things that I went through and what God has done for me. I'm just going to tell you about it. You know, when I um, was at home, I didn't have, couldn't get around too good, couldn't get around too good. It was always something wrong, you know what I mean? I couldn't sleep in my bed at night because the bed was too high. I would wake up like uh, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. If I did, I had to sit up until 6 o'clock in the morning, day clean, because I couldn't lay back down. Because every time I laid down, I couldn't breathe. My breath was... But I didn't go to the hospital. You know, I didn't go to the hospital. So one morning, I, I told my granddaughter, I says, um, I'm going to the hospital today. I'm going, I'm going. So she said, well, let me call the ambulance for because if I take you by car, you're going to be waiting a while. But if you go by ambulance, they'll take care of you right away. So I said, OK. So I went out. She called, and I got in the ambulance. And my um, granddaughter was there talking. She said, sit back and lay back. I sat back, and I, all I remember was just tilting my head back. That's all. So the lady told me when I did come to, she says, we thought we had um, lost you there for a minute. I said, what? She said, we thought we had lost you. She said, because we couldn't get no response from you. So we thought we had lost you. I said, me? I said, no, I'm on my way to the hospital. That's, that's exactly what I saw. No. She said, I'm telling you. She said, you even wet yourself. I said, lady, I said, let me tell you something. I said, that's not me. That's what I, I said, that's not me. She said, I'm telling you. Then I felt myself, I said, oh, Lord. She, I did, I was soaking wet, soaking wet. So they took me to the medical center, and when I got there, they asked me, what was the problem? What, 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 what happened? Where's the pain? What, 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 what happened? I said, I don't know. You don't know what happened? I said, no, how could I tell you what happened when I don't even know, you know? So um, they took me, and she said, he said, you had a, a stroke. Then he said, you had a, a slight heart attack, just like that. I said, OK. So they took me in there, and then they started talking to me. And where's the pain? I said, I have no pain. And, and, and see, the, the, the thing about this, all through this sickness and what I was going through, I had no pain. There was never no pain. I had no pain. They said the heart was bad. I had no pain. There was no pain I could feel in my body. There were just things that happening, but there was no pain. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. No pain. You know, sometimes people go through a lot of pain, but I had no pain. No pain. And I thank God for no pain. I thank God. I thank God for no pain. So they told me that uh, after they did, they have to put a uh, stent in my heart. Then after that, they had to put this uh, defuminator. They got that on me. So, but it seemed like things didn't really start happening until they put that there. Sometime I wonder, I said, did I really need that? You know what I mean? But I said, okay. And I, and I got that, and I stayed in the hospital for a while, and they gave me that vest the way that vest was so long, and that was heavy on my body. But you know, all through that, I still had no pain. And I thank God for it. So I went to the hospital and all they did all these things and I came home. They sent me, you know, they send you to this uh, after the hospital with your heart doctor and stuff like that. So I went, so when I went to the heart doctor, I didn't think he cared about about us. So that's just the way it was. He, um, I would see him. I waited two hours maybe to see him or something like that. And after I saw him, all he did was just come in there and did one of these. And I'm going to look at my pacemaker like this here and said, this shower, this shower. I'm saying, what do you mean, this shower? I shower before I come here. I, what are you talking about, this shower? And that's all he seemed like he would ever do. And then my leg start swelling, start swelling up. My leg was like this here, that the bottom was swole like that. And I'm saying, 
I need some water pill or something. And it would make it so bad he would get to the computer or get on his phone and turn around and look out the window and start talking on the phone. And right then I knew he had to go because he wasn't concerned about me. He was concerned about he, what he was doing. So I said, okay, and he wouldn't even give me no water pill. I didn't have no heart medicine. I didn't have no water pill. I didn't have anything. But I didn't have no pain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, hallelujah. Thank you. So I told my daughter, my granddaughter, I said, no, I ain't going back to him no more. She said, well, go somewhere. I went to Christ Hospital and they, they told, they said, you here for a second opinion. I said, that's exactly right. So they asked me who the doctor was and I began to tell them of the things that was happening to me. <clears throat> so he said, okay. He said, well, that's a good doctor. I said, so it may be. I said, but he is not my doctor, not anymore. He said, well, what you want us to do? You want to call him and tell him? I said, you do what you want to do. Well, we can call him. I said, do it. Because from then on, after I saw her, he was, maybe that's the way God had it planned anyway, you know, because everything is planned before it happened. So it was a reason for that to happen. I went there, and after I left the house, they gave me some medication, and I came on home. And then things just began to happen to my body. Things just didn't, wasn't right, you know what I mean? But I thank God for it. Because all through that, I knew that God was doing something in this body. And God just took my life back, took me back over my life, and let me look and see what was going on, where I came from, where he brought me from. And I thank God, hallelujah. I thank God, hallelujah. I thank him for that, saints of God. Sometimes we need to go back. Sometimes we need to check our life out. Sometimes we got it so good. Sometimes we don't need nobody or need things. But you need somebody in this world. You know what I mean? So after I look, God just took me back. He took me back to the first time that this began to happen. He took me back. God just showed me and let me see things. And I said, Lord, I thank you. You know what I mean? Sometimes you wonder why God is doing this. Maybe he's doing this because my time is here. You know, you think all like that. Maybe it's showing you where you come from and what you didn't do and what you should have done and what you're supposed to have done. And sometimes we don't do everything we're supposed to do. Sometimes we don't even listen to what the Lord say. You know what I mean? So I, I said, okay. So God took me back, even took me back to when I... Um, was in the house. I left church and I was in the house. And the um, I, everybody was in the house. And how uh, I was in the living room laying on the chair. And I fell asleep. I was in a trance or something. And I had this pain in my back and in the lower part of my stomach. And I couldn't talk. I couldn't, I couldn't move. I was like a stiff fold. I couldn't, I was just there. And everybody in the house, but nobody knew what was going on with me. And all the Lord was just telling me about the things that I didn't do. You do. You eat what you want. You don't fast. And all this stuff he was saying to me. And all I could say was, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I couldn't, I couldn't say nothing and I couldn't move. I said, thank you, Jesus. And the next day I went to the medical center. And the man, told, the doctor told me, to said, listen, do not look in the mirror. He said, because your eyes have set a half an inch back into your head. I said, what? He said, don't look in the mirror. I guess he figured it was going to frighten me. Something that, you know, when uh, my, my, one of my kids called Pastor Ellis and he came up to the hospital and I was telling him about what the doctor said and, you know, different things like that. And then I told the doctor, I says, um, you won't find nothing wrong with me. I said, you can give me all the tests you want. You can examine me. I said, but you won't find nothing wrong with me. You won't find nothing wrong with me. And he did. And he didn't find nothing wrong with me. Nothing at all he could find 
ground with me. So I said, well, thank you, Lord. I came home. Saints of God, this time when I went to the hospital and I came home, and God began to work on this body. That's what I have to say. He began to work on me, my mind, my body. Don't, don't think you better than nobody else. Don't think you know better because you don't. You may know a little bit and got a little bit of knowledge, but honey, there's a lot out there you need to know and you need to learn. You hear me? I know that. I know that. But you know, I think God for sending me here was a reason for God to send me to House of Prayer. There was a reason for that. And I praise God for that reason because there's things I needed to know, things God needed to take out of me, things God needed to put in me, and I praise God for it. I thank God for the teaching. I thank God for the word that went on day after day, night after night, whenever. God been good to me, saints. God been mighty good to me. God been better to me than I've been to myself. God been good. God bless my life. God just let me go on for a little while. I always said, Lord, help me that I might be able to see all the kids grown before you take me from them. God has blessed my life all Every last one of them, out of five, all of them are grown. I said, thank you, Lord. God not only let me see them get grown, God even let me see all my grandchildren. So I got 35 grandchildren. I got 25 great grandchildren. And I thank God for it. They all just about grown. All of them grown. And I said, Lord, I said, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I had an appointment to go to the hospital to for a checkup, me and Miller. So I went. I, I was in this bad shape. I just barely could have walked one step behind. I, I tell you, saints of God, I, I don't even know how I make it. When I got into the doctor's office, he said, oh, he says, uh, what happened? You look like you're in worse shape now than you did when you, um, I said, I am. I was like, I had to walk a little few steps and I had to stop. Stop, I had to rest. I don't care where I was, I had to rest because I couldn't breathe. My, my, it's like my life, just leaving this body. I couldn't breathe. So he told me, says, uh, well, I'm going to have to send you to the hospital. I said, we already know that. I said, because we had my daughter and my aunt, granddaughter, we had this discussion already. So he said, well, I said, I don't deal with medical center. No, I don't deal with medical center. I said, I'm in Bayonne, and you in Bayonne, and my doctor's in Bayonne, so we'll deal with Bayonne. So he said, okay, he said, no. So I went to Bayonne Hospital, and they checked me out, and they said, um, we we going to admit. I said, no, because the doctor had already told me, and I went there looking for it anyway. You know what I mean? And my legs, and my feet. Y'all remember how my feet used to swell up? I couldn't wear no shoes. And it, it's gone now, but I just, I, I got to wear, you know, flat shoes and stuff like that. And it was so big, since my legs were so big. My feet, my hand, my arms, my stomach, my hips, if you, I had to take both of my hands just to lift up one of my legs, just one. I gained 51 pounds less than a month. That was the, the water had done backed up in me, 51 pounds. Then I went to the doctor office when they did, you know, give me these pills and stuff. The pills, them, they don't good. He had to put the, give me the latex in the arm and then to be, uh, I tell you saints, it just make you keep going to the bathroom, keep going to the bathroom. There was so much water. Not that there's just too much water. My body was so hard, it shined. It, when I said hard, I meant hard. My thighs were hard. Everything on me was like, like this was hard. My feet, my hands swole up like that there and it was hard. I look at myself, I'm not gonna lie, Lord forgive me if I'm lying, but I know I'm not. I see all my veins in my hand just rise up big, and I look and it just roll up and disappear. Wow. And I couldn't understand, I said, my veins gonna disappear? Everything just disappear right in front of my eyes. And I said, Lord, what's going on? My hand, if you do like this here, you leave a big print in my hand. 
you leave a big print. I don't care where you touch me at. My feet, you leave a big print. Everything was a print. The only thing I didn't was the print was my face. My face was my face. And I said, Lord, thank you. And I went in the hospital. I went in Bayonne Hospital. I stayed in Bayonne Hospital for maybe a week or so. And after I left Bayonne Hospital, they told us, I think you need to go to the rehab. So, uh, you know, you can do the rehab, because I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk, and my daughter used to try and come and walk, and my son used to, Juan used to come and try to walk me every morning, and stuff like that, but it didn't work. But when he made on army to rehab, so I had to do these exercises and stuff like that. So I did the exercise every morning. They even had me doing it on Sunday, the exercise, even on Sunday, six days. So I decided to go to the uh, rehab and then they um, started working on me, you know, give me this and give this and give me medicine and stuff like that. I said, thank you. And they were very nice, very nice. I had no problem, you know. You're always wondering how people going to treat you. But let me tell you something, I had good treatment. Thank you, Lord. People treated me real well, real well, and I thank God for it. And I praise God, so after I went to the uh, Tell me, says, okay, says, you can go home. Your insurance says time for you to go home. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so your insurance says time, but you can fight it if you want to. I said, no, I don't need to fight that. I said, I can do it. I can make it. So I did. I, I went home, and then they sent me a nurse, and they want to know what all you got in your house and stuff like that. You got to walk on it here. Yeah. You got to, uh, whatever they asked me that I had, I told them yes, and I need, I didn't need it. I didn't need no walker because I got two. I didn't need no cane, I said I got two. They said a party chair, I said I got that too. A shower chair, I said I got that too. They said, well you seem to have got everything. I said, yeah. Then the lady looked at me and said, this yours too? I said, yeah, that's what you get. I said, yeah. They said, oh, you got everything. I said, yeah, they didn't have to give me anything. And I just thank God for his things. I thank God. I thank God. They didn't let me do no walking in, in the um, place in, at St. Anne. That's where I was. They didn't let me do no walking by myself. I had to stay in the wheelchair, only wheel myself to the bathroom. They didn't even want me to do that. When I got home, uh, I got to walk. I want to get rid of all this stuff here. So I'm going to walk. Amen. And, yeah. You know what? My sister would call me and say, what you going through? She said, I've been through that. She said, next is the wheelchair. I said, I don't think so. I said, I'm not claiming no wheelchair. I told her just like that. I said, I'm not claiming no wheelchair. I said, I will walk. I'm not claiming no wheelchair. You ain't seen on the day, do you? <laughs> Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. Hallelujah. Because I know it was the goodness of the Lord. I know it. But before I left here, my brother still was when I get to talking to him. Sister Greta told me, says, um, uh, Mother Bash, I said, yes. She said, I want you to read Psalms. 118 and, and 17, I think it is. I said, she said, read it every day. That's what she told me. So I says, okay. She says, because nobody can do this but you. We can't do this for you. You got to do it. She said, every day, and I never forget it. I remember. And I begin. Yes. I shall not die but live. Yes. Declare the works of the Lord. And if that's so way I could remember it, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. Thank you, so I said, thank you. And I shall not die. 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 Because it's not over yet. It's not over yet. This is just the beginning of we, what we got to do. Because this is hard time. This is the time the Bible was speaking about. Sometimes we ignore it, but ain't no time to ignore it. God is on our side. Yes. 
don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. At this time, we're going to have our scripture reading for the morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Shall we stand and honor God's word? Our scripture will be coming from Matthew, the 28th chapter. And the title is The Resurrection. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes was white as snow. The gods were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. He has risen. Just as he said. Come on and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead. He has risen from the dead. And gone ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman turned away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran and tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clapped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And the words of the Lord are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated in the presence of God. We thank God for the reading of his word. Our Savior lives. And we thank God for our sister Dominique who, it was only three children. It was really only two that took recitals. And we thank God for Sister Giselle, Brother Zaire, that are excelling in the things of God. And I just want to say to parents, I'm not an old fogey, but you have to instill Christ in your children's life. You have to do it. It's imperative unto parents to train them up in the things of God. The scripture talks about of a generation that has forgotten God and that's the generation that's coming up but your child don't have to be one of them you have to put the word in them tell them that there's a higher power tell them that jesus saves you got to teach them saints if not you're going to regret it take it from me i have a friend i never forget this she had two boys and she told them they didn't have to go to church they were coming here. They were they were members here for this is when we were young. And she oh, you don't have to go to church anymore. Those two boys grew up to be thugs. 
in and out of jail. One was up for murder. But put the word in them, saints. It's not going to hurt you to get up out of the bed and bring them to church. My mom and dad did it for me, and I thank them. I thank them. I'm here today because of my parents. I didn't know anything, anything about Jesus. They taught us. These children don't know. It's up to the parents to teach them that there is a God, that there are rules you got to follow. Don't steal. Don't cheat. Don't lie. Those are ten commandments. We got to teach them, saints. How else are they going to know? Am I telling the truth? So we thank God for Sister Giselle, Brother Zaire, who's phenomenal academically. Giselle is academically. They're, they're striving to be who God called them to be. And our Sister Jaquela will be coming also to give her receptions. At this time, we're going to call Brother Zaire first. Let's give him a hand. Talking about the resurrection. A happy resurrection day. Uh, right. When I die, I'll rise up to will be in heaven, me and you. We'll see Jesus face to face up in heaven, a happy place. Happy Easter. Amen. Happy Easter. At this time, our sister Giselle. Jesus loved me, this I know, the Easter story tells me so. He died for me to bear my sin. He opened heaven to let me in. All right. Yeah. Open the heaven to let me in. All right. One of his, last but not least, our sister Jaquela. One day Jesus came to town and people threw their gammons down. They all began to shout and cheer, Hosanna, Hosanna, God is here. Right. Amen. We thank God for our young people. He rose. He rose from the... He rose. He rose. He rose from the dead. Oh, he rose. He rose. He rose from the grave. Oh, he rose. He rose. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Let's shout hallelujah. Come on, let's shout hallelujah. Aren't you glad he arose? Hallelujah. You know what? Some people just don't get it. They don't get it because they don't understand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I remember. Me and Ella, we were coming up back in the day. Hallelujah. This looked like even though we were celebrating Christ's resurrection, it feels like that as, as a young kid, I had just arrived. Glory to God. I couldn't wait to get to the church. I, I, I remember going out the door, Mama Holly, wait a minute, boy, wait on me. Because I had had me some new shoes on. And, glory to God. I just couldn't wait to get to the church. Hallelujah. To say my, 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 my recital. I was excited. Hallelujah. Didn't know what I was excited about. But one thing that I knew, I was excited. Amen. I went to this morning to pick up Sister Barbara and picked up Sister Barbara. Amen. I looked and the world out there is lost. They're not celebrating. You don't see young kids and their mom and their parents walking. Amen. You know, you should see the saints of God. They're walking, with, especially the mothers with the hats on. Then I went to pick up Mother Bass down on this end of the town. The same thing. We have allowed Satan to steal everything that God had given unto us. But see, I refuse to allow Satan to enter into my domain. Hallelujah. This is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. I just don't celebrate resurrection on this day. I celebrate resurrection every day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to read my scripture. And then I have some things that I would like to do. Amen. Before we get into the word. My scripture this morning, I have just a few verses will be coming from somebody's phone ringing. It got to be the Lord. I know it better be the Lord. <laughs> what the Lord say? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord got something for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to direct your attention this morning, this resurrection morning, to the book of 1 Peter. We, we are talking about the resurrection. And I don't think a lot of us really understand the meaning and what it does for us of resurrection and the meaning 
of resurrection. First Peter, the first chapter, the 18th verse, beginning at the 18th verse, we're going to read down to the 23rd verse. And let's, if, if you can, I, I would ask all of you that can, let's pay reverence to the word of God. Because he told his father, he said, I come in the form of a book. His holy word. First Peter chapter 1 verse number 18. It says, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. I want you to let that set in. As silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you. For who? For us. Thank you, Jesus. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith whose faith my faith and hope might be in God seeing ye have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfriends love of the brethren see that ye love one another with a pure heart being born again being born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever Father God we come today in the celebration of the resurrection of new life new birth for all of us that believe on you Father we thank you today Lord, we thank you today. Hallelujah. Forgiven me. Come on and make it personal. Forgiven me. Hallelujah. Another chance. Hallelujah. Lord, didn't even deserve it. But your love gave me another chance. Thank you, Jesus, for another chance. We thank you for this day. We thank you, my God, for the miracle already that's been wrought in this place. As our church mother, hallelujah, she told me that she was going to walk through the doors. And Lord, you allowed her to keep the word. She walked. She didn't roll in. She wasn't real chad in, Lord. We thank you for the strength that thine have given unto her. Continue to bless your people. Continue to, to glorify thyself in all of us. Remember those on the airways. Those who continually to support and listen to this ministry. We thank you for them. Father, allow me to speak your word. That Lord, I know I feel that you have put in my heart. Allow me to speak, Lord. Allow me just to teach a little bit this morning without getting excited. Because, Lord, you know I love you. And I get excited. Hallelujah. There's an excitement, Lord, in your word. There is joy, Lord, in your word. There is peace that is manifested by knowing your word. 
thank you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone give the Lord a hand clap because you see him in his presence. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. The thought that I would like to leave in your hearing this morning is our old history ended with the cross. That means that we died with him. Our new history begins with the resurrection. That means a new birth of the spirit. Hallelujah. Look at that, my God. This is what the resurrection means to all of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And before I get into my preachment, as I was studying last night after Elder Lawrence left, the Lord moved on me. And he told me to bless some more blessed or. Mm. I did what he said. And then he told me to take these envelopes. His name is Jesus. And this is what he told me to write. He said on to give these envelopes to each one of you. And he says on this blank section below. He said write your miracle. On this resurrection Sunday. Asking by faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your miracle. God wants to show his power. He wants to heal. He wants to deliver. He wants to set people free. He wants to use people who have given up themselves to him. So I'm going to ask Elder Lawrence to pass out these. And I want you to write your miracle. On the blank space. And then I want you to. It's all in that. Ella. Give everyone that possibly can. A bottle of that oil that has the mustard seed in it. What I'm saying is saying. God don't require and ask much of us. You want to be healed. You want to be delivered. All you need. Is the faith the size of a mustard seed. And believe. And God will grant your miracle. Elder would you pass them out. Hallelujah. You know we say that we believe. But yet we don't pull the trigger. We don't activate it. Hallelujah. The resurrection has a powerful meaning. Hallelujah. While he's passing that out, I'm going to go ahead and, and at the end of the service, we're going to collect them and we're going to put them on the altar. We're going to put them in this basket and put them on the altar. If you don't have that faith, don't write it. Because you're not going to have your miracle. But if you got that faith that Jesus speaks of in his word, must seed faith. God will work a miracle in your life. As I had said earlier, our subject is 
our old history ended with the cross. That means that we died in the flesh with Christ. And our new history began with the resurrection Sunday today. We had a new birth of the Spirit. That means that, you know, when we, we were born without the Spirit of God in our life. Because we are the descendants of the first Adam. <clears throat> we must understand the fall of man in order to understand the Savior's atonement and the, our resurrection Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. The divine mission of the Savior without whom we could not be delivered from death or sin. Don't you know if Christ had not came here we would not be delivered from death and sin. We would still be, glory to God, in the chains of the enemy and sin. He declared the Son of God had the power to make the world. He had power to direct them. He came here as the only begotten Son to fulfill a mission. I want you to listen. I'm, I'm trying not to preach. This thing is so powerful. Hallelujah. He came to be a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. I want you to listen to this, man. Before the foundation of the world. Glory to God. When it was written, it was all so finished because when God said it's finished, it is finished. Hallelujah. He brought about salvation to all mankind by giving his life. He opened up the door to resurrection. And he taught the way by which we could gain eternal life. And what does eternal life mean? Eternal life means to go back in the presence of the Father and the Son. When Adam sinned, the Father left presence. He left his presence from Adam. Glory to God. That's how powerful sin can be. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Adam and Eve exercised their agency. And when I'm speaking of agency, I'm talking about they exerted their own power. See, when you don't abide by God, then you are exerting your own power, your own authority. And you can't do that. You, 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 you go to work. And you can't even exert your power on your job. We all got the answer to someone. But we answer to the supreme being. Go, don't you know he won't steer you wrong? Hallelujah. This world is geared to nothing more than you being a slave to it. They don't give a hoot about you. I remember I worked for 20 some years with these McDonald chains, working every day. And my wife used to tell me, she said, honey, Say, you just, you need to stop that. Because if you die right now, somebody going to be right there to open up them stores. They don't care nothing about you. All they care is about what you can do for them. Glory to God. But Christ, glory to God, came here to show that he loved us. That he cared for us. And that he was willing to die. To deliver us from the bondage of sin and the bondage of death. Adam, they exerted their own power and their own volition. That means that their own volition means will. And they went on and partake of the fruit of which they were commanded not to eat. Thus they became subject to the law of sin. 
sin had us handcuffed. There was no way of escape. We were, our feet were bound. Our minds were bound. All we could do was sin because the presence and the power of God was not in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. In that disobedience of Adam and Eve, God was not free to visit upon them judgment. They were to learn that besides God being a merciful father, that he also is a just father. And when they broke the law, they were subject to receiving penalty. I told you not to partake of the fruit. I told you that in the day that you partook of the fruit, that you shall die. And that death was a spiritual death. It was always intended for the flesh that you it, it, to live, but because in the tree, in the garden, there was a tree of life. That was for fleshly people. That's why they were kicked out of the garden. So that flesh could not partake of the fruit and create human beings that would not die. You can't fool God. I'm talking about Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. They were to learn that besides God's merciful, that he was a just God. They were visited by all vistitudes. You're going to learn some words this morning. Vistitudes. Hallelujah. Which is mortal for that time since they had air. Vistitudes mean is a change a variation occurring in the course of something. They were to learn that their disobedience that they received the penalty of that judgment. They were forced. That's what it did. That's what sin does. It forces you. They had to earn their bread by the sweat of their brow. For now, they had become mortal. And when you look up in the dictionary for mortal, mortal mean mortals mean death. All mortals being is going to die. There were seven words that was missing from Adam's vocabulary. When God called Adam, he had Adam to name all of the animals. Oh, we're going to get there. Bear with me. Glory to God. And Adam was a brilliant man. But there were seven words left out in his vocabulary. Glory to God. Uh, but after the fall, Adam soon added those seven missing words to his vocabulary. Number one was death. There was no death until after Adam sinned. Nakedness. They didn't even realize that they were naked because the glory of God shielded their minds. There was a curse. It brought sorrow. It brought thorns. It brought sweat. It brought the sword. Well, the sword what? The sword of God was put at the east entrance of the garden to keep them from coming back. You know how we do sometimes. Someone tells us, go home. We try to sneak back. But the cherubim were put at that east gate with swinging swords to keep them out of the garden and to keep them from the tree of life. The fall caused a change to overcome in them. That change affected, their change affected the whole human race. See, all 
all of nature, creation changed. All of the animals and the plant life changed. All kind of life was changed. The earth itself became a subject to death. Oh, but thanks be to God. Hallelujah. For Jesus, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Long before Adam was created and placed on this earth, long before sin had even entered into the Garden of Eden, long before Calvary's cross was ever accomplished to undo the damage to sin, the cross had already occurred. Listen at the power of God. It had already occurred in the mind of the triumph Godhead. Jesus Christ's destiny was predetermined long before we were even born. Long before the creation and the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ was predestined. Oh yes he was. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nothing in his earthly life occurs or happened by chance. Thank you, Jesus. All this was written in the book before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Even his miracles, his miraculous birth, his graphic death were in the Godhead, in his eternal plan. Lo, I come to do thy will. That's what Jesus told the Father. And I want y'all to read Psalms 40 in that entire chapter. Lo, I come to do thy will. He told his Father at his incarnation, Hebrews 14. I'm sorry, Hebrews 10, 7 through 9. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of a book. It is written of me. If we want to know him, get in the book, honey. Just don't read the book. You got to study the book. When you read the book, you can't get no understanding. But when you study the book, huh, you open up yourself huh, for the power of the words that's on the book. They will come alive huh, and they will open up your mind huh, and they will, uh, and you will get an understanding. The only way that you can get an understanding of the book is through the power of the Holy Ghost. His Spirit will open up your mind. Will open up your understanding. Hallelujah. Lean not onto your own understanding. When you go on your own understanding, that's in the natural. And honey, you're making a terrible, a terrible mistake. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. Glory to God. Then he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. Hallelujah. This is what Christ done by which we are sanctified through the offerings of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 and 23. I want you to understand this resurrection. For as in Adam, the first Adam, all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ was the first fruits, afterwards that which are Christ at the coming. Honey, you want to get to heaven, you want to see Jesus with your very own eyes. 
You got to do. You got to go to Calvary. Oh, glory to God. Jesus. You got to go down, honey, in the liquid grave. We walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, glory to God. This is a faith walk. Oh, glory to God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Have you seen? Jesus, oh glory to God. No one of us have ever seen him, but the evidence is prevalent. Oh glory to God that he lives. Oh glory, hallelujah. I believe if we were able to go back and visit with Abraham and tell Abraham in the Old Testament, Abraham. Abraham, does he live? Is faith required? I'm quite sure Abraham will speak that he lives. He lives. If you were able to go back in the time of Moses, when Moses first encountered him upon Mount Zion in the frame of a fiery bush, and the bush didn't even burn up, I bet you Moses would tell to you I am that I am oh glory to God he lives oh glory hallelujah and thank you Jesus if you would ask Paul glory to God Paul said that I was the chiefest of sinners you can't get no lower than me but if you would go back and if Paul would walk through the doors and come up to the podium, I know he would tell you that he lives. He lives. I know he lives because he lives in me. He's not dead. He's alive. He rose. Glory to God. I'm not here by no hope. I'm here because he lives and he lives in me come on and say thank you Jesus glory hallelujah I know he lives thank you Jesus Mm -hmm. the Bible says you know we can get caught up glory to God when flesh doesn't crucify you when you don't crucify flesh you can get caught up see that's what happened with the disciples glory to God they were so fleshly inclined even all the miracles glory to God that God had performed in the very presence of their eyes and he told them Oh, glory to God that he was going to die. Glory to God. And when they caught him and he died, they forgot everything. Glory to God. They fled. They fled. They ran. They ran. Hallelujah. But early. Hallelujah. Early. Let's bring it to present. Early. Brother Joe. Early. This morning. Huh? Glory to God. Glory, somebody told me that it was a woman. Glory to God. I believe it said, was it Mary or Martha? Who was it? Who was it? Mary. I know Mary. When she went to bed the night before, she couldn't sleep. Glory to God. I know she thought about Resurrection Sunday. Oh, glory to God. And she tossed and turned all night. But the Bible says, Early Sunday morning, she went to the grave. Glory to God. And when she went to the scepter, the stone had been rolled away. Hallelujah. And no doubt, Mary didn't go all the way in. I'm paraphrasing. She stuck her head in just to see. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But see, when she looked down, 
the tourniquets was all just like somebody had been in there but it wasn't nobody <laughs> Jesus had got up he had got up the Lord of God and Mary began to go back and she looked and she seen someone coming glory to God she seen Jesus with her own two eyes see some of them not yet seen him but I love the scripture that says that glory to God let's say is them that believe and have not seen do you believe do you believe Glory to God. If Christ is dead, what makes the flower bloom? Oh, glory to God. If Christ is dead, who woke you up this morning? If Christ is dead, who made the sun come up this morning? If Christ is dead, who allowed you to use the activities of your limbs? Oh, glory to God. If Christ is dead, oh, glory to God. Christ lives. He lives. He lives. Never to die no more. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Our old self, our old man, our old woman was crucified. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But on Resurrection Sunday, God got up. Glory to God. He got up with all power. All power. All power in his hand. He got up. He got up in his resurrected holy body. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know that my God wouldn't work, wouldn't walk with a strut. But I know he said, I told you. I told you. It was, it was predestination. This thing was going to happen before the foundation of the world. And he told me. He told me. He said, no, 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 no. You can't test me. I got to send to the Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can't catch him. I got to go to the Father. Glory to God. We will be able to touch him though. Hallelujah. When we did, I glorify God. You want to be able to see him. Who he really is. And glory to God. And when I see him, when I see him, I'm going to get on my knees. And I'm going to say, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And all it takes is mustard seed faith. The size of a mustard seed. Hallelujah. My mom been dead a few years now. Hallelujah. But nobody could sing that song like my mom sang. Hallelujah. And just to remind you, he got the whole world in his hands. Glory to God. And then she would say, he got me and you, brothers. He got us. He got us. Hallelujah. I said, he got us. Nobody can pull you away from God. The only person that can pull you away from God is you. Glory to God. It's you. Hallelujah. He lives, saints. And when the God the Father rose him from the grave, never 
to die no more. Hallelujah. It's worth it. The life is worth it. Don't come to church. Sit in church and lose your soul. We got some people that's going to do that. Don't lose your soul. We got to learn to be hot for the Lord. Glory to God. He don't want no cold church. He don't even want no lukewarm church. Don't you know what he, he said, I'll spew you out. I'm going to get a little nasty. I'll spit you out. He don't want no lukewarm church. Glory to God. And when we believe that he rose, hallelujah, he rose, hallelujah, not for himself, he rose for me and for you to have an opportunity to come back and go before the Holy Father. He lives. He lives. The dog saw him. How do I know he lives? He lives in me. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord, for another resurrection Sunday. Lord, I hope that this word that you put in my heart that the people who did not understand the importance of the resurrection that they understand that that if it was not no resurrection Hallelujah, we would be walking in false. And God the Father, Jesus, would be a liar. But he's not a liar. He lives. And if you want proof, honey, all you got to do is go to the book. He said, I come in the volume of the book. If you give your heart to God, even when you read it, the book, don't you know the Holy Ghost will come in and save you? Hallelujah. You don't even have to be in church. But if you believe Him, Believe his works. What was accomplished on Calvary, honey? Act, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. If you believe. Father, bless your people and continually, my God, to let you anoint you. Hallelujah. A bishop Ellis that you gave them, Lord. A mother Ellis that you gave them, Lord. Let the anointing and the power of your spirit continually to rest upon this house the house of prayer so that when people walk through the door they can feel the power of your spirit thank you my God in Jesus name we pray come on to give the Lord a hand clap
God is so proud of you. You have come a mighty long way. You haven't been here that long. But honey, and make it right. Deal with me throughout the night. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, deal with me until long in my life becomes yours, yours until long in my life becomes yours. Holy Spirit, me throughout the night. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, deal with me until in my life becomes yours. Oh, 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 oh,
those of you who need to be born again who have not been baptized in Jesus name now is the time for your rebirth from the old into the new the spiritual birth when you look at what's going around Jesus is soon to come. People don't fear God no more. They don't care if God come or go. But for those of you who got a little mustard seed faith, come on and get right. Hallelujah. Get right with God. Be baptized. In the name of Jesus, go down. In his name. When you go down into this liquid name by faith, you come up a new creature. Then he said that he will endow you with power from on high. That's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But it's in your hand. Jesus, no one made him do what he did but he loved us he said i'm going to give them a, a chance i'm going to come and i'm going to give my life because scripture says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin but see the key to that is that god would not accept just any blood it had to be sinless blood. And there was only one man. Hallelujah. Who could do it. And they knew about it. They knew what we were going to do before the foundation of the world. In God's plan. Thank you, Jesus. Don't waste the great opportunity. Because that opportunity is closing. This dispensation, I don't know how wide the door is still open, but I know it's closing. I don't know how big I am. I might not be able to get to the crack, but it's still open. As long as that door is open, we have an opportunity. And to make it even plainer than that, when God woke you up this morning, and I'm talking to those out there on the airways. And you don't have Christ in your life. You have an opportunity. Glory to God. But one day, that curse is going to run out. Come on, saints. Come on, people. Let's get right with God. Say, let's get right. And go home. God bless you. May have a slam of money at this time of the barn. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God for the word on today. Praise for each and every one of you that are here today on this Resurrection Sunday. You have made the Lord day a great day. You have made the Lord's day a great day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We come there at this time and we come to lift up our offering at this time. Now, saints of God, you know your responsibility here. Every now and then, we just have to remind you. Don't forget your time and your offering. Become faithful to that. I say, become faithful to that. And watch God do a great thing in your life. Hallelujah. So when you become faithful to him, he becomes faithful to you. Hallelujah. And I am a firm believer of that one there. God supplies all our needs. Not just some of them, but all of them. So at this time, our ushers come come forth at this time. Let's come on the direction of the ushers in Jesus' name. Bye. 
from Look where he brought me from He brought me out of darkness Into the marvelous light Look where he brought me from Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this offering. We receive that on today, Father. We pray your blessings, O oh God, upon it, O oh God, that it be used, O oh God, for the upbuilding of thy kingdom, for these blessings and all other blessings we ask in thy name alone, in Jesus' precious name. Everyone say amen. Amen again. Thank you, Lord. 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 You know, um, I, I'm going to say I'm going to say this because it's right. You know, we do this every year, and uh, it's important that you get your kids in church because there is rewards in, in coming to church, and it has been taught us from day one from Bishop and Mother Ellis and this is just a carry on from them but I want you to if you don't have a church home for your children you can bring them here you can bring them here and just you know Jesus said that when he came here on earth he said that they didn't want the spirit to teach him he said, I know why they fought. They fought on me for the fishes and the loaves. And see, we don't want to we don't want to rear our kids up just to come to church looking to get something, some fish and loaves. They need to know about God. They need to be taught. Amen. So we thank God for this Sunday, this resurrection Sunday. Amen. I like to give uh my wife, Sister Greta, a twenty-third song. Because, amen. So the Lord, thank and praise God for Ella Lawrence and Sister Caroline, video technician. Amen. Thank Brother Jody and Brother Jackson on the drums. And thank God for you. But it's, it's, it's important that you remember and understand the resurrection. And if you are not born, of the spirit you're not going to make it in you're not going to make it in in 
we want everybody amen to be caught up in that first takeoff amen our hearts and minds are clear so we stand to our feet Father, it's in the blessed name, the blessed name of thy Son, the only begotten of the Father, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, for opening up my eyes, our eyes, to the meaning and the purpose of your resurrection. Lord, we thank you for the newness of life that you have given us. Father, as we prepare to go from this place with the right presence, Lord, look on us, protect us from all of the seen and the unseen danger. And Lord, continue to bless our lives to be a blessing unto them. Let the people see the power of your light in our lives. And Lord, then let them follow us into your house. Father, bless the way for thyself. In Jesus' name we pray. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.